Okay, that's my 15 count CQC drill, or close quarter combat drill. Now I might get into some uh, blade later, I don't know, but I, I want to do this now. It's been a while and it's important and you, you should not just only do one thing, obviously. But, okay, a little bit on that form. All right, I created that form 2015 for Rogue Combatives when I went on the books with it and it was for adults only and I made it so for people who you don't have to be in great shape to start it or anything you saw there's a lot of gross motor skills but they're all correct so I'll, I'll break it down but I've been teaching that form uh, to adults since 2015 up until now so now it's going out there all right because you can, like I said you can't just rely on your weapon no matter how good you are with it whatever you have to be a weapon yourself you know and you got to take the time spend the money put in the effort the sweat all that shit not for a specific amount of time so the rest of your life till you're dead you know you never stop but that's another topic all right let me get to the close quarter combat form all right first okay this is not the starting position it's the pre-starting position starting position is here all right now break there's a reason for it let me show it to the side here. Now I'm going to get one of my uh, students to do a video where I'll, I'm showing this on him too as well. It's a little bit easier to see but you still should be able to get this. Um, and if you have a partner then even better. Okay the re reason being if say uh, you're in a situation you're maybe outnumbered or something and uh, you fear like you're gonna get sucker punched or something like that or even just one person and you know you, you don't know what you wanted why to do this is two reasons mainly one you blade your body okay so now you're not just such a big stupid target everything exposed so just by blading your body you know now your organs all that stuff is much more harder to get and angled off so that's one and number two the hands come up and open because if the hands do this and you show your cool boxing stance or your Muay Thai stance or whatever if you do that shit what you're doing is you're alerting the target that you're ready to fight you know how to fight right it, you know so what does he do then he gets more gears up and you know dials it up more or at the very minimum, he can't take them by surprise now because he's alerted. And not to mention the fact that if people are looking, onlookers and stuff, you know, if you both have your fists up, well, but if one guy has his fists up and other people remember the other guy had both his hands up, like, hey, wait a minute, that's good. You know? Okay, so you blade off, hands come up, left over the right, like you're holding a football, kind of. And you're looking through that area. The target could be there, it could be around, doesn't matter. You're you're blocked from a sucker punch already without even moving anything. So you're here. It's also attack by draw. Okay, because they think you're submissive, you're scared, you're, you don't want any trouble. You're going like this and you're really drawing them in so you can uh, if you hit them, you know, eyes, chin, get them closer, knee them, you're, you're drawing them in. But that's another thing, attack by draw. I'm not doing that now. Okay, so we're here. And you're looking through that it's very important because uh you throw spears from here and a lot of things in close quarter but i'm spending too much time already i can tell okay so one you're here okay now the start this is it number one is a right cross elbow that comes and hits that outer line because why most people almost all people are untrained when something threatening or uh fast or whatever is coming at them their natural response is to, to cave in it's, it's, it's to do that you know uh, so I took that motion blended it with the elbow added the elbow so that this punch is coming on my high line here or a sucker punch I'm going to get my head out of the way too and I'm going to man, blow that arm up any part of it from the pinky to the fucking armpit Okay, wham! Now, while I have that line, 
I hit that arm, my closest weapon is here to his neck or his temple. You know, I don't want to go wham, come back and chamber up and hit. It was way too much time. No, you're in there, you got space, you take more and you take more. One, you blow up the arm. It's very easy. You don't need a lot of training for that. One, boom, hit any part of the arm. Two, you hit the neck. It's right there. One, two, three, four is a repeat to the other side. So that's how it is, both sides. One, two, three, four. Now five is a palm to the forehead. Six is a palm to the chin. Seven is a palm to the uh, solar plexus. And eight is a, either another palm to the solar plexus or if you want to go to the ribs or something on the side low, you do that. But. So um, one, two, three, four, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine is an upper elbow strike with the right, hitting anything, anything, boom. their right side and I'm gonna use my hands like a hook hook that neck okay it works I got it unsporing a lot of people there use, use that so here now uh, 13 is a knee spike or the downward knee spike to the this uh, nerve here <clears throat> 14 is a lead leg left spike knee spike and 15 is a deep thrust, straight deep thrust in the groin or lower abdomen. Spike the knee, they won't even be able to move. Boom, 13, 14, lead leg, knee, 15, the thrust. Doing it from this angle. telling you just that move alone just just me spiking someone right here you you cripple them <laughs> pretty much right there on the spot I'm telling you I'm telling you one time I remember I, I kicked a guy not in anger or nothing we were training uh, at a school and we were doing these tie kicks back and forth with each other and I was just throwing them not hard but I was throwing them really correctly and my leg was hitting him like boom, kind of like a bat, a little, just real loose, boom. 
and I don't know, I just, I hit him with one shot, he just, it just, it just went down. They had to get an ambulance come and take him out of the school, and like, I heard his whole fucking drink and shit was all messed up, that I busted his uh, nerve. You know, I didn't mean to do that, but I took note, you know, and wow, alright, that's a definite dandy place to attack. You know, whether it's, you know, with a empty hand, a rape, with his knee, to be engaging up here, blah, 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 blah. Ooh, shut the fuck up, you know, right in the knee. Get this spectacular, goofy head shit. Um, oh, yeah, and the other important thing in the form is the importance of the empty hands for hitting, right? One example, you do not want to punch somebody in the face and, and punch them in the mouth, in the teeth, and have their disgusting, gross, plaque-ridden, bacteria-infested mouth and teeth look, go into your skin and into your fucking bloodstream. No, thank you. But a palm, you'll be all right. And you pine, you stay away from the chin, the mouth. That's why you either punch or palm the top of the forehead here. You can get the knockout button is the chin. Good solid shot there. Stay away from the mouth. No other targets on the body. And there's a, like I said, there's a bunch load and shit you can do. Foot trap someone, fucking throw them down, they don't even know. But, alright, I just wanted to get that out because um, I've been putting out nothing but Knife, 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 and uh, you know, there's, there's other things to it. So, and I was gonna couple it with some knife, but I'm not. I'm gonna leave it like it is, and stop this and get a little more out of this gorgeous sun. All right.